Hello everyone. Welcome to another video here, 45 Drives. You have me here, Brett Kelly. And me, Mitch Hall. And we're talking about this thing, the next generation. Well, that's the third generation. The third generation Stornado. The NVMe capable 32 bay Stornado. It can do more than that, but we'll get into that right after this. All right, so the third generation NVMe Tornado. What's special about it? What is special about this thing? A hell of a lot, why don't you tell us? Okay, so the first thing is, it is, it is one of, if not the densest uh, NVMe machines on the market. Absolutely. 32 bays in one box. Yep. Nice 2U form factor. It's a very similar footprint to our 2U SATA Tornado yep. that we released a, a little bit ago. Yep. Very... Uh, the second gen Tornado. The second gen, yeah. yeah. Um, but that one only did SATA. This one does NVMe drives. It also does SATA drives. And it also can do SAS. Damn. It can do that because it's built on the UBM specification. Okay. UBM meaning universal backplane management. Very cool. It's a specification that's been put together, mainly driven by Broadcom, adopted by others. Okay. And the whole point of that was to... Um, build a take, platform. Maybe. Build a platform, just... take NVMe out of the Wild West that it was, yeah. and make a standardized way of attaching a bunch of stuff into a server. Yep. There's a lot of benefits to doing it this way. Yeah, it sounds, seems like now we have essentially something that we can just use for everything at this point. It has the ability to do everything, right? It was built in such a way that we've got modular little pieces in this yep. that this front end can get changed out in the future for other form factors. Very cool. The boards and backplanes in here can be integrated into our other storage platforms, yep. like our hybrid machines and everything like that. NVMe and the hybrids, I like that. And what makes it nice is we can use the same controllers on the other end, the same HBA controllers, right, right. no matter what kind of drive we're talking to. That's really cool. Yeah, and, and uh, it sets us up for a good kind of future-proof platform. Yeah, exactly. Um, the electronics, too, are updated as well. I think that's another big thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I can jump into that one, so that's a really cool one. So, as you know, obviously, with NVMe comes a ton of extra performance. We'll get into what we mean by performance soon. But, so with that, obviously, we wanted to update the electronics of our, of our NVMe system. So with that, we are running two different SKUs. One is the... Milan AMD Epic CPU, 64 core. And to get an Intel equivalent on that, essentially what we need to do is do a dual proc system. So two CPUs, two 30, 32 core CPUs, giving us the same 64 cores. Um, so we have, and I think that's third gen scalable, in, uh, actually I know Correct. it is, third gen scalable Intel Xeon. Um, and so those are the two big, really cool things about the, the electronics. Uh, DDR4 up to two terabytes of RAM yep. um, in these things. So very beefy, very capable of pushing a ton of IOPS. Yep. Well said. Well said. Um, the other benefit we get of UBM and everything like that is everything's hot pluggable. Everything's Ooh. great. You just slap a new drive in, you slap an old drive out, mix and match, left, right, and center. So you're saying, you know, someone gets one of these, but they only have 10 NVMEs, but they've got a bunch of say, enterprise SATA SSDs around. They could just drop those in there, no problem, and essentially section them off to two different pools. All hot swappable. All yeah, you can even put them in one pool if you're crazy. Yeah, if you want no, to, fair enough. <laughs> no, and then the other yeah, thing cool. is, is a lot of the industry industry standard people are used to, if they're not using these drives, they might be using a lot of M.2 NVMe drives. Yep. There's a big rise of that. Yep. Great, great, great uh, pieces of technology, but not hot swappable, hard conversation exactly. to get to and everything like yep. that. So you get the nice, easy tool list, push and pop design that uh, you hear in 45 drives. With the uh, second gen Astronauta, yeah. which we is really cool. We hate caddies. Yeah, we yeah. do it. And let me just... Uh, Grab one of those. So, nice. so simple, yeah. right? Uh, if you're in front of it, of course. There we go. <sighs> Very cool. So when you talk about an NVMe server, we really got to nail speed. We say speed a lot. Performance, mm -hmm. high speed, high performance. We say that about our other products too. Yep. So is everything just high speed and performance? Are we just saying that? Well, yes, but... <laughs> Context There's, matters. Context matters yeah. and things change. When, when, you, uh, when you talk about speed, particularly with storage servers, um, you really kind of care about how fast you can get data in and out of the server. And there's two numbers you can, two metrics you can use to measure that. Yep. Something called throughput or something called IOPS or input output, output operations per, per second. second. Yep. You got it. Um, hard drives, really good at throughput. Yes. Hard drives doing sequential things can do throughput just great. A Q30 full of drives, mm -hmm. all spinning hard drives, 
Push about seven gigabytes a second. Yeah. That's fast. That's a lot That of is speed. about an eighth of what this thing can do fully <laughs> yeah, loaded. Exactly. But it's still about eight times higher than uh, a 10 gigabit network. Yeah, exactly. Which most people don't even kind of have yet. Yep. So, um, the throughput is there. Hard is drives. Is there for hard drives. Yeah. So then again, it's like, so it's fast. It's faster than what you have already. But what you have already is still really fast. <laughs> What's so really good about it? The other side of that equation. The, the IOPS. IOPS per second, the, how fast you can get things in and out. Yes, exactly. Now, throughput is easy to understand, easy, yeah. easier to understand. Megabytes a second or gigabytes a second. How Pretty long? Easy. I have a one gigabyte file. How long is it going to take to come down? From it's, here to here. Yeah. Most people understand. It's how long does it take to go from there onto my desktop yep. or something like that. IO per second, if I told that to the, to the layman, they'd be like, ah, I, what, what, what does, does that, that mean? mean? Yep. To most people, even in the industry, they go, I don't really know what that means. Yep. So to really understand the benefit of what this thing can do compared to like a spinning hard drive box, we got to talk about IO per second. Yep. So bear with us here. We're going to go to the whiteboard and we're going to just give you a little breakdown of like, Let's define a few things. Here we'll just define general. a few yeah, things yeah. And, and try to give a little more context of what the hell an I.O. per second really is. Yep. So it starts with this equation. Throughput. Throughput. Which we were just talking through. about. That's our gigabytes per second or megabytes per second. How much data you're going to get per unit time. So that equals. Block size. So how big of the data chunk that's going over the network is it? Is yep. it 4 kilobytes? Is it 128 kilobytes? Is it a megabyte? That's the block yeah. size. I'm asking for some data. I want this much. I'll How be much can you send more. it once? Yep. Multiplied by. Oh, here's that number or that name, IOPS. Yep. So throughput is actually a function of IOPS is in there. So to understand it, we on throughput, we truly actually do really kind of have to understand IOPS if we really want to know, yep. right? So what I want to show off is something that I hope we'll hit it home and let's talk about it. So when we talk about a hard drive, right? A HDD and forgive my terrible left hand writing. We uh, just round number. It can be a little higher, can be a little lower. Typically we're talking in the terms of about 400 in and out operations per second that a hard drive can do, right? So if your block size is about one megabyte, so you're sending one megabyte chunks multiplied by 400, well, that hard drive looks pretty darn good for a single, sorry guys, <laughs> for a single, you want to fix that for me? For a single hard drive, we can spit out over or around 400 megabytes a second. Multiply that by 30 hard drives and you've got four gigabytes a second, right? Mm -hmm. or, Correct. Yes, yeah, <laughs> or more, whatever, anyway. Um, so, okay, so that all makes sense, right? 400 Illustratively IOPS. makes sense. Correct. Beautiful. Yeah. But, when you start to decrease that block size and it starts to go smaller, let's say 128K, or let's even go all the way down to 4K, we're still doing 400 because that number actually didn't change. Now, what would use a 4K block size? Well, virtual machines, potentially some databases, those kind of things, right? Where you're not just transferring big files back and forth, you have an application that might need a little chunk of data very, very quickly. Yeah, think transaction. I need to update a column, one single value in a database. You got it. Uh, if you don't want to think database, think Excel sheet. You've got a massive Excel sheet with millions of cells and you need to change one number in it. A virtual machine needs to go read one registry file from a Windows virtual machine that's on that storage. It's just, it's a, hey, uh, can I just get this little piece of information right, now, right there? All right. It, I don't need a big throughput back, but I need a fast response time. So... Now we look at this and we say, okay, well, our 4K block size is what we're using now, but we're still at the limit of what a hard drive can do, which is 400. And now our hard drive doesn't look so fast anymore, right? It's down a little pity, 1.6, 1.5 megabytes a second. Yep. Okay, so that's a hard drive. And now this is why NVMe is so darn powerful. Because an NVMe, its limitation is at the PCI Express lane. So we are using two PCI Express lanes per NVMe. The standard is four. The reason why we do two is because we're super dense, right? We've got 32 NVMEs in a system, but that still gives us tons of performance and a ton of throughput. Yep. So if we have the ability to do about two to three gigabytes a second of bandwidth for one NVMe, like that's how much uh, bandwidth our, our cable has, our lane has back to the CPU. Now, this NVMe may be capable of something like one million IOPS 
And now that block size, whether it's one meg, well, it can go until it saturates that at that point, right? So it might be able to do more than one mag multiplied by one million, but it's going to be limited by the actual, yes, thank you very much. That's 100,000. Um, it might be limited by that. Okay, but start decreasing your block size again. 4K multiplied by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There. Now we have... Too many zeros. <laughs> now we have, yeah, that's 10 million. Um, but now we have essentially, you know, I don't know the number. You could do four kilobytes by a million and whatever that equals to. Massively higher. Massively higher, drive is. exactly. What we're trying to say here, and again, we're using round numbers on here. The, the reality bits and bytes kind of fudge it a little bit. But what we're trying to say here is throughput wise, yeah, we can get tons of stuff. NVMEs are so fast at how they respond and respond to yep. things like this. The IOP numbers are through the roof. And this is where this thing shines. Exactly. And then the final thing to all of this is when we're talking about hard drives, we're talking in latency in terms of millisecond. Like that's how we speak to hard drives because that's what you're dealing with. When you're doing with flash and NVMEs, you're literally at the like nanosecond scale, right? So latency is much, much lower. So if you have an application that needs much lower latency, that's where these guys can really shine. Okay. So to sum all this up, what we really wanted you to do was take that little I.O. per second lessons and pull it back down to reality. Yep. Use a real life example and just show you or give you a, a, a sense of scale of yeah. how much more performance is in a 32 bay NVMe server compared to a 30 drive um, Q30. Yeah, in more concrete terms as in let's use some VMs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So to do this, let's define a real life scenario. We talked about it a little bit, yep. but uh, virtual machines. Virtual machines are, are often measured in terms of I.O. performance yep. rather than how much throughput it can do. Exactly. NVMEs are everywhere, or NVMEs, VMs are everywhere in this industry now. You're using VMs even if you don't think you're using VMs. <laughs> um, somewhere that VM is communicating with a storage server, whether it's in the cloud or in your company's data center or in your basement, talking to a storage array and requesting input and output out of it. Yep. Um, so, if we're going to define our kind of standard unit of VM performance, mm -hmm. let's turn to the, uh, the biggest player in the game, VMware. VMware, yeah, for sure. VMware has some defined uh, profiles yep. for uh, how they can define a low, medium, medium or high. high performance virtual machine. Yep. And they have low at 500, yes. medium at 1,000, and high at 2,000. And I'm almost certain I'm right. <laughs> I am right. Yes. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to define our uh, standard unit of virtual machine performance, yep. and we're going to say how many uh, high performance VMs a Q30 can handle, yep. and then how many these. Uh, exactly, the, the third gen Serenado can do. Okay. And while, while he uh, draws this out and shows the three tiers, just to preface it to make this so people understand, when we're doing this in these comparisons, we are dealing with raw numbers here. Like we're not talking about, obviously anytime you put a file system, anytime you use uh, some sort of network protocol, there's gonna be overhead that comes with that. We're not looking at any of that today because there's different values that it could be. There are variables, right? One might be higher, one be lower. We just want to look at the raw storage of what each server would be capable of. It keeps it nice and easy uh, to understand. Um, and then you can always later on look at extra levels or, or tiers or pieces of the, the puzzle that will add extra overhead. Well said, Mitchell. And uh, just to jump along with that too, is we really just want to show oh, you uh, 16,000. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, you're exactly right about that. We want to show that what you just said. And um, what's really cool about NVMe, and this isn't true with SATA SSDs, SATA hard drives, and everything like that, is as your capacity gets bigger on NVMe drives, they get faster. Performance gets faster. Or you wait a year, chips. and there's a new generation of NVMe drives, and they're even faster than the other ones. Yeah, they're on the next gen so, of PCI Express. <laughs> it's funny, when you do performance comparisons with spinning hard drives or even with SATA SSDs, yep. If I go from a 960 gigabyte all the way up to like 8 terabytes or, or 8, 20 yeah, terabytes, yeah. they're going to perform the same way. They're going to have different IOPS numbers. Oh, oh, you mean on I'm, the SATA? I'm saying SATA. Yeah, on yeah, NVMe, yeah, yeah. though, you jump a capacity. You get a big, big difference. You get a big difference. Yep. So the size of the drives that you put into the NVMe machine really does affect the overall performance. Yeah, for sure. Which also goes into this is we've got 960s in here, 960 gigabytes. Yep. So these numbers were generated with that. Based on so that, exactly. Right now, this thing was measured at about... 8 million 
IOs per second yep. compared to the 16,000 that the Q30 gave us. Yep. So what this means is that if my math is correct, the Q30 can do eight high VMs. Yep, high performance VMs. Per one Q30. Yep. That, that That's looks not right. a lot. Not a ton, nope, especially for how dense a Q30 could be in storage. Yeah. You wouldn't need a ton of that much storage just to run three, eight VMs probably. That might serve someone's need, yep. which is why we're saying not everyone needs an NVMe server, exactly. but some businesses do, some yeah. people do. Some people want to have the power in their engine yeah, to run exactly. as many as they want. Yep. So how many can these run? <laughs> well, it can run 4,000 high VMs in one box. A little bit of a stark contrast there. <laughs> so put that in mind, just to put that in contrast, a Q30 for you, for fully drives, you, yep. you need 500 of them <laughs> being hit in parallel to give the same performance that this one, same two. To give the same IOPS that that one box could do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty that's the difference. That's what's special about this. That's where mm -hmm. NVMe comes in. If you have a use case that has transaction sensitive, latency sensitive, yep. things like this, VMware storage, you need high performance. You have a um, uh, online database yeah, exactly. for transactions. Better not drop any of those. Yep. Scale up. Maybe you don't want to spend all the money, power, and infrastructure to put 500 <laughs> yeah. Q30s yep. in. This guy's your answer. And then the extra cool thing too is, well, yes, it is amazing at that too. It also beats the snout out of it in throughput as well with like 64 gigabytes of throughput capable as well. You got it. <laughs> you got it. And while that's important too, yeah, it's you got to have some pretty exotic networking, networking to, to, to be able to handle that. that. Yeah, exactly. So that's why, that's, that's what excites us the most about this is how fast it yeah. is. I think we did a pretty darn good job of explaining what this is, who it could be for. Yeah, I know, pat our back here and, and why it's special. Yeah. So this isn't the last you're going to hear about this Definitely thing. not. This is just a little intro, what we're really excited about. And even internally, as we spoke about this thing, people would be like, well, how much faster is it? <laughs> and when we said, oh, it's about 500 Q30, someone went, oh, wow. So yeah. we're like, there we go. Let's <laughs> yeah. go tell people that for now. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. It's funny because once performance numbers and once the numbers get so big and different, it almost stops meaning a lot. And that's why it was important to try to put it back to reality and put it back to visualize of 500 Stornators versus this one thing because it helps visualize that stuff. Anyway, awesome. Go to 45drives.com, take a look at the uh, Stornado page. Uh, it'll tell you everything you need about the NVMe. Yep. Reach out, we can get you a quote, and uh, these things will be shipping in the near, near, near future.